Excellency Chairpersons, Excellency Ms. Garawelli, Executive Director of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, Excellency Mr. Ronald Lamola, Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Republic of South Africa, distinguished panelists, speakers, and delegates who are taking part in this event virtually. First of all, I would like to thank the UNODC and the government of Japan for organizing this important side event and for inviting me to deliver a keynote speech. I was planning to take part physically in this forum, but I have to cancel the plan due to a strict limitation and restriction for participants of the Congress. I hope the virtual participation of panelists and delegates in this forum does not downgrade the importance of this event to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on prison management. It is indeed a forum for exchange of views and experience on how we can cope with formidable challenges in mitigating risk and applying appropriate measures in all prisons. I am pleased to share with you here the condition in Indonesia and the policy we have been implementing to prevent the spread of COVID-19 pandemic in the correctional institution all over the country. We use the term correctional institution instead of prison in Indonesia. The main problem for us is similar to what other countries have been experiencing. Prisons are overcrowded, where social distancing is hard to implement, and the risk of transmission of coronavirus is high. Limited space in our correctional institutions has caused overoccupancy and overcapacity. As we can see on the screen here, as of February 2021, there are 252,861 inmates in our correctional institution all over Indonesia, while the capacity to accommodate them is limited to only 135,704. So I must say that the remaining 117,157 inmates are not properly accommodated. In some correctional institutions, especially in big cities, the rate of over-occupancy ranges from 300% to 600 percent. As of February 2021, those who have been infected include detainees, inmates, and correctional officers. 4,343 inmates, including children, have been infected. 374 are still undergoing isolation treatment, and 3,948 have recovered. 221 inmates died. 1,872 correctional officers were infected. 380 people are still undergoing isolation treatment and 1,471 have recovered. 21 officers died. The Directorate General of Corrections of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights has been taking various strategic steps in order to prevent and handle COVID-19 pandemic in correctional institutions, among others. One, coordinate with other institutions, such as Ministry of Health, Indonesian COVID-19 Task Force, Police and Persecutors, Supreme Court, WHO, UNODC, ICRC, and non-governmental organizations. Two, Update guidelines for the implementation of health services in correctional institutions. Three, disseminate information on health protocols and new habits to prevent the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Four, intensify training at all correctional institutions, adapting to new habits. Five, no new detainees accepted from the police and the attorney general's office. Six, limit family visit and conduct virtual visit. Seven, carry out isolation for 14 days for new prisoners who are still in the trial process. 
Eight, monitor and evaluate the efforts. Nine, release a number of inmates with certain criteria based on the regulation of the Minister of Law and Human Rights of the Republic of Indonesia, number 10, 2020, concerning the terms of providing assimilation and integration rights for prisoners and children in the context of prevention and combating the spread of COVID-19 in prisons. Let me share with you further on this particular assimilation and integration policy. It is basically applicable for inmates who have served half of the sentence period and one third for children. As of February 2021, under this policy, 61,633 inmates have been released and returned to their family. Released inmates are still required to virtually report to the parole officer until their sentence periods ends. The ministerial regulation has been reviewed and considered effective in achieving its target to reduce the spread of COVID-19 pandemic, although it was found that less than 1% of the inmates has abused the policy and committed crimes again after the release. The policy has been extended by the new ministerial regulation number 32, 2020 until 30 June 2021. Under this new ministerial regulation, we simplify the mechanism for release and extend its application to foreign citizens who meet the requirements. On the other hand, in order to avoid repeating the same crimes by release offenders during the assimilation and integration period, this policy is not applicable for certain offenses such as premeditated murder, rape, violent robbery, and child sexual abuse. In general, the implementation of guidelines and health protocols for the prevention and handling of COVID-19 at Indonesia's correctional institution have been proven effective to prevent the spread and transmissions among inmates. However, there remain challenges to be addressed, including overcapacity in correctional institutions, detention facilities, children correctional institutions, lack of capable human resources in correctional institutions, lack of budget, supporting facilities and infrastructures, limited support from the local health office and tax force. We have been improving our infrastructures and facilities to address those challenges, which include building new correctional institutions as well as relocating and renovating them so that we can increase and double their capacity. The pandemic has also encouraged us to further review the prevailing system in Indonesia, particularly on how to use alternatives to imprisonment in order to avoid overcapacity in our correctional institution. More than half of inmates in Indonesia are drugs-related offenders. Some of them may need rehabilitation program instead of imprisonment. There has been intensive discussion to revise the drugs law as one solution to reduce overcapacity in correctional institutions. This effort becomes a national legislation priority and hopefully we could conclude the process by the end of this year. Distinguished panelists and delegates, we need technical assistance and capacity building to improve human resources as well as the services and facilities of correctional institutions. In this regard, we highly appreciate the support from many parties, including the UNODC and ICRC office in Indonesia for its assistance in providing personal protective equipment and hygiene kits for a number of correctional institutions and hospitals in Indonesia. We hope for continued support and assistance from different parties. There is no doubt that international cooperation is required to mitigate the risk and build a better prevention of COVID-19 pandemic. I hope we can have lessons learned from this forum and explore further potential of developing cooperation with other parties. Thank you.